Howdy and welcome back folks. Today I'm going to be showing you the basics of red power wiring as well as red power gates. I've created a secure location somewhere on my friend's server to demonstrate the abilities of this wonderful system. For today's experiment we will need two tools. We will be needing a handsaw. The handsaw comes in several varieties. You can use red power gems to make it or you can use diamonds. Today I'm going to be using diamonds because that'll cut just about everything. The other item that we will need is a screwdriver. This is for changing the direction of gates or altering their properties. Um, with the handsaw you can cut various micro blocks out of stone. You can make different kinds of panels as well as cover strips. I'll be showing how these work in just a moment. The other items that we are going to be needing are some uh, red alloy ingots, which you can create in an alloy furnace. Um, just as a side note, I've color-coded all of my jacketed wiring. Blue is going to be carrying blue power, and red is going to be carrying a redstone signal. Um, if you put three pieces of uh, red alloy ingot in a crafting table, you'll get wiring like this. If you use a diamond handsaw and make cover plates, you can create freestanding jacketed wire instead. And again, as a side note, you can create the same with blue alloy, but with alloy wiring, it must be insulated if you're going to be placing it on walls. With these ingots, you can also color code them with insulation of various colors. You'll be seeing these different wires all around, too. And last but not least, the white. Very good. Now, to demonstrate how these work, um, they can be placed on the ground. They can be placed over corners. Um, with the jacketed wiring, it will connect to uh, regular alloy wiring, but it can also be floating in midair. Um, you can separate two pieces of wiring using cover strips like that. Um, these cover strips are really useful for a lot of different stuff. Um, as you can see they come in various levels of sickness. Uh, how sick is that guy? Oh, that's even bigger. Okay. Um, you can of course do the same with the different colors of wiring and they will not connect but they will connect to unjacketed wiring okay um, and of course as I said there is also blue alloy wiring for carrying blutricity but I'm not going to be discussing blutricity beyond that in this mod okay let's toss all this out of our pack and I'll start demonstrating the different gates For most of these gates, I've tried to wire up some real-world example. Um, this is an AND gate. There is also a, another version of it called an X-AND gate. Oh, no, an N-AND gate. An N-AND gate is exactly the same as an AND gate, except instead of outputting a redstone signal, it doesn't output a redstone signal. Um, it's pretty much just a regular AND gate with a NOT gate attached to it, just to save space as far as I can understand. The way an AND gate works is any time it receives a signal, um, one of these torches will go off. You can configure which torches are on and which torches are off with a shift right click on a screwdriver. There. And the way an AND gate goes is if all of the inputs are on, the output turns on. One way that I use these is if I make like a door alarm or some kind of a, you know, intruder alarm, I can turn it on and off with a switch, and then only when the switch is on will the alarm go off. Um, this is an XOR gate. Um, the way it works is if one or the other of the uh, inputs is on, then the output will go on. But if both of the inputs are on, it won't go on. XOR gates are actually used in real life a lot. Most light switches in houses are XOR gates. Like if you have two light switches on different sides of the room and they both control the same light, 
because it doesn't matter which way this switch is, you can still control the lights on or off with this one. So, I'd once again use that for lighting. Uh, that's just the light switch. It controls the ones that are here on the floor and stuff. Um, this is an OR gate. This will go, if either of these inputs is on, the alarm will go on. So like here I have it hooked up to a nuclear reactor. So say you had an alarm and you wanted it to go off if your nuclear reactor was overheating. Or if you wanted to have a sweet rave party. And once again there is an N version of that uh, not OR gate. Which is the exact same except it will output a redstone signal unless it gets some kind of an input. This is a toggle latch. Toggle latches have a lever built right into them, which you can uh, control manually if you wish. I like to use toggle latches to make buttons act like levers. Like, the way this works is every time it gets a redstone signal, it toggles which one of these two torches is on. So right now it's outputting to the left, but there's nothing there. And the out right output's off. I like making piston doors using toggle latches. It just, because it's really easy to hide a button if you're making a secret door, especially if you're using pistons. So uh, that's just an idea there. These are repeaters. These four on the left are vanilla repeaters, and these four on the right are um, the red power two repeaters. Uh, vanilla repeaters only have four settings, up to four ticks, which I think is like less than two seconds. Um, red alloy p repeaters can go up to 128 ticks, which I'm going to hit this button and you're going to see. First these three come on, and then these come on. The purple takes a while to come on. And I'm going to actually run out of stuff to talk about before this orange one comes on. Because it takes so long for 128 ticks to happen. There we go. It also stays on for a very long time. I'm not sure exactly how long. I don't think it stays on for 128 ticks, though. Okay, that's it. Oh, no, what? you got one more over here. Here's an actual practical use of a repeater. I have a repeater here with a slight delay of about three ticks uh, attached to a timer. And here I have sheep which are standing in front of deployers with shears in them, and then I have transposers over here to pick up the wool. When a transposer receives a redstone signal, it will suck up nearby items. So if I flip the switch, all the sheep are going to get naked, and then all the wool is going to get collected into this box here. And then with a timer, you can right-click it to set how long it, goes, it takes to go around. Every time it hits that torch, it will emit a redstone signal. It has a input on the bottom where if that input is on it will pause the timer and reset it okay here we got some more um, gates that I've set up this is the wall of shame I couldn't figure out good examples for any of these gates so they're just over there um, mocking me we'll leave that guy for last um, these are state cells you can set the time on them uh, here's a basic state cell attached to a pressure plate when it receives the redstone signal, it starts outputting on the left. Um, as soon as this redstone signal cuts off, it's going to start counting down to the top for the next two seconds. And as long as it's counting down, it will keep outputting to the left. Um, I have a, a pulse former here. A way a pulse former works is when it receives a redstone signal on that side, it emits a redstone pulse for a very brief moment, just long enough to turn on these state cells. If I'd had a, if you watch this regular button press, it's going to take almost a second for that button to turn off. If I didn't have this pulse former here, the red light would stay on a lot longer than these other lights, and it wouldn't look as nice. So here we go. I have this set to a countdown. Three, two, one, go. There we are. This is a buffer gate. The way a buffer gate works is if the bottom input is on, then all three of the outputs come on. The only thing I could really, I mean, I'm sure there's really smart things you can do with a buffer. But I figured if you had three light switches on different circuits, and then you wanted a way to turn all of them on at once. Uh, this is a sequencer. It goes around. You can set the time on it, just like any of the other ones that have this little stone pointer on them. And uh, it outputs on a different face for this amount of time before changing. I made a party light. I once again, I'm sure you can do very smart things. Apparently, this is good for clocks because it's attached to world time somehow. But I made a party light. That was all I could think of. Um, this is a randomizer. If it receives a signal on the bottom, it starts randomly outputting on these three. I made Christmas lights. I couldn't figure out anything else. To I'm sure you can do really smart things. Once again, 
Um, this is a synchronizer. The way it works is it has these two little cells on here with memory. If it get, receives a redstone signal, it remembers that, that um, it's been triggered. And then if both of them are triggered, it will output a redstone pulse for a very brief instant out the top. But if it's remembering one and you send it a redstone signal out the middle, it forgets. I guess that's it's a very basic memory cell. And then you can you can like have it remember something on this one. And then when you give it a second signal, it'll output if it's received a signal. So, you know, pretty cool. Um, this was my crowning glory. I was trying to figure out a good way to use a counter. And I added pulse formers and AND gates and a toggle. And what I ended up creating was a, um automatic cookie dispenser. Every time you push this button three times, it'll give you a cookie. I figure this would be really good for training monkeys the value of perseverance. Um, this is one last setup. I was playing with my friends and I just... I figured it out, but at the same time I really don't know how to explain it. And I can't figure out a practical use for it, but I will explain. This is a bus transformer. Um, it only connects to jacketed cabling, which I didn't have an example, but here you go. Uh, no, no, no. Bundled cabling. I apologize. Um, with bundled cabling, you have to use a certain amount of insulated wire and string to make it. You can use any color and you'll still get the same. Um, okay, so here's how it works. If all these switches are off at the moment. If you turn this switch on, it will not allow the redstone signal through. But if you activate this one on the blue side, it acts like a pass-through. So see, that lamp came on. Um, but if you, So you can control if it passes through with this redstone signal. Now, this redstone signal up here doesn't seem to do anything. But if the pass-through is on, and that's on, it acts like a memory. See, like I've output on the red, and then I've turned it off. But this thing's still on, and still outputting red on both sides. So it's got some kind of memory in it. And, uh, like, you can turn the memory off here, but it will still act as a pass-through because the pass-through is still on. So it, it feels, I don't know, I like it. It feels really smart. I can't figure out a real-world example of it in use. So I just kind of threw it here on the floor, and I was playing with it and jumping on it, and I just, yeah. I'm sure one of you guys can comment and tell me something really smart to do with this. But, yeah. That's the bus gate. And here's the ones that I couldn't figure out. I put them on the wall so that they can stare at me and tell me how stupid I am. Let's see, we have um, an RS latch. I kind of figured out how this works, but I couldn't get a good example of it. The way it works is it has these two inputs on the sides. And, like, if I flip this left side up, that torch will come on, and then both of these will stay on, and then I can turn it back with this input here. I guess it's like another way of having a memory of a redstone signal, but I couldn't figure out anything really cool to do with it. These are vif uh, various state cells. Um, the way they work, as far as I can understand it, is depending on what signal is going through the bottom or the top, will control what happens on the other one. Like, this one acts kind of like an OR gate, and this one acts kind of like an AND gate, but I couldn't figure... I've seen someone use these with um, a monitor, and you could control the different colors of the monitor pixels based on uh, these cells here. Um, this is a transparent latch. I was looking on... Look at this guy! He's got five torches on him. He's all squiggly and just weird looking. No one could tell me what this does. I was Googling for like 15 minutes and no one had an example or anything and I just couldn't, yeah. So he's on the wall, but I really don't feel ashamed of putting him up there because no one can tell me what he does. Um, and this is a multiplexer. Um, as far as I understand it, it's got these two inputs on the side and it's got this uh, signal on the bottom. Let me get a lever. It's real quick. Um, there. And depending on if the signal on the bottom is up or off, it will depend. It will decide which of these two signals it outputs on the top. Um, a real-world example of a multiplexer is like a um, your cable box, because you're 
choosing which signal the cable box outputs to the TV based on what channel you pick. This is just a two-channel multiplexer though. Once again, I couldn't figure out a real-world example for it for use in this little warehouse I've made. So he goes up on the wall. Um, that's about everything, guys. I hope that this gives you some basic ideas for uh, wiring. I hope you enjoyed figuring out about the different gates. I know I did. It was really fun to experiment and try and figure out different things to do. I'm sure there's far more creative people out there who can do much more interesting things with these. But, I mean, they're, they're fun for little side projects and stuff that I have around my house. And I really like this automatic cookie machine. It really, it really teaches me that pushing buttons will do good things for me. Anyway, uh, this is Mary Dog signing off. Enjoy!